Hello and welcome to Scrapbooking Station. In this video it's all about paper piecing, a very specific form of paper piecing and that would be inlay. So sort of with some basic pieces and some overlapping pieces and then kind of like filling in the puzzle. So I'm going to put the camera over my shoulder and we'll get this started. This first project I'm going to work on, I want to, this is basic inlay. So I want to talk about the basics and how you put this all together. And what I'm talking about is having a die cut. These are large letters from stamping up. And I just stamped them out of pattern paper that was backed by some cardstock. And I'm going to do that a lot, so I might as well talk about that now. These are both pattern papers that I've backed on some computer cardstock. And I've talked about this before, but what I like to do is put glue stick on the back of the pattern paper and glue stick onto the cardstock. And that makes it kind of like this double layer. Then you let it sit for a little bit, let your glue stick set, and then you can cut intricate, very intricate cutting dies and not have things lifting up. Worst case, if you've got little lifts up, you can always put some glue down. Anyway, so I've got my innies and I've got the outies that they're going to go into. Of course, if you've got holes like this, you want to go ahead and save that little niblet. So, let's put this onto the panel that it's going to live on, and I'll okay, be back. Now I'm going to use some liquid glue, and I'm going to be real careful, because I'm going to do this off camera. I need to be over it so I can see, to kind of get toward those tips. And I'm really not worried about getting too much on here. Let me just... I mean, pretend there's glue all over here. So, if I flip it over... I'm more concerned about my edges, and this mat is some holographic uh, yellow paper from Paper Wishes because I'm going to have something here showing up. But other than that, everything else will be covered. So I decided rather than cut strips, because I actually did cut strips to kind of edge everything, I just go ahead and back this whole thing that way. And so. I'm really not worried about glue smushing out into the letters because remember I'm going to tack these down anyway and I'll be back with this Audi on top of this mat and then we're going to start plugging in some of these letters. Okay, I'm in pretty close so you saw that photograph I had to make sure especially these sections that are moving into your piece you want to make sure you've got glue on them. And now it's not really all that persnickety. I want to go ahead and put down glue here. Since I'm covering the center, I could have left this holographic showing, but I'm not going to. So I'm going to do this with each of the letters. If you get a little bit thick, you want to go ahead and pull it into the center. And then you just want to fit this, and this should fit exactly. You're cutting with the same die cut. And so this is going to fit exactly in there. And then this is a pretty small niblet. Let me make sure I got enough glue there. Okay, kind of flatten it out a little bit. And I'm going to substitute the inside of my A. Okay, I'm going to continue with the rest of my letters. I'm going to do something special here with the leaves. I'm going to finish my project. I'm going to so finish the first project. It's going to go under glass. If you saw the spring with the uh, batik, it was a little busier. So something a little more simple, really pretty, very low profile. So it's going to fit under glass really nice. I'll take a photograph of that. But since you've got your plaid innies and you've got your solid Audi, why not cut a little bit smartly? And you've got all the same pieces to go ahead and plug into another autumn. In this case, it's going to be a border for my scrapbook page. I don't think I'm going to finish that out. What I want to talk to you next is a little more um, creative inlay. And so what I'm talking about here is kind of overlapping. This is one maple leaf. And it's kind of planning ahead. We're going to use umbrella weather framelits, and we're going to continue on. Okay, I'm back, and these obviously aren't the umbrella framelits, and that's only because uh, those pieces were really too small to, to make my point and for you to be able to see it. So I'm going to switch gears a little bit. This is a card within a card. So I've already got my base ready, and this is the way it's going to roll. Of course, my little card 
is tucked inside my larger card. So this is all put together and now this is the kale that I'm going to want to put on top of this yellow. And so obviously it kind of needs to stay uh, quite flat, quite flat for this to fold, you know, really nicely and professionally. So I've got uh, this framelit and this comes from Stampin' Up! Project Life. It's one of the Project Life framelits. And I've got all these feet. Now these feet come from Hot Off the Press. They're Janie's Girl stamps. So I've just taken the feet and cut them off and colored them. And then on the inside you saw I used one of the girl frames from Janie's. So another stamp. So the first thing you want to do is kind of try and figure out where everything is going to go. And especially what square is going to go on top or under what other square. And so I've decided this is pretty much it. And so I know I've got this one that I need to cut first. And then these two need to be second, third, and then this is the last one because it is the one most on top. And hopefully this will be clear. So I've kind of got that figured out. And what I'm going to do first is position this here. Now you've never actually seen me roll anything and that's usually because my plates are so scarred that you can't see it. Now I do cut down and I cut down so that I can see where this is rolling through. So I'm just going to place this. Make sure when I put my plate down that stays nice and square and roll it through. Okay. After it cuts through you're going to have something like this. This is scrap that you can save for something else and what I like to do is because I know this is now a permanent piece of the puzzle I'm going to take that on the back. So I want that absolutely flat. So I'm going to tape it away from where I know I'm going to cut next. And so what you're really doing is kind of like a cut and fill. Now I know I want this guy to be over here pretty low so maybe something like that. So I'm going to do the same thing again. I sure did almost cut that wrong. So again, cut the piece, fill in the piece. Now I'm going to move up. I want to be separate from that one. I want to move into the center a little bit for this next one. So something like that and roll it and I'll be back. So I went ahead and just kept cutting and filling and this is how the front turned out. Uh, before I place it, if I want to wrap something around, which I don't think I do, this is plenty basic. So I've got all my happy feet, I've got my happy feet salutation. Of course the inside is all done. So let me stick this on here. I'm just going to use a tape pen and get that panel on here because this is really an independent piece at this point. So that's going to go on there. I'll be back. Okay, so everything's put together and this is the way it turned out. And what's cool about this card, well, first off, if you've got a card in, inside a card, you're not really sure how it's going to display. So, let me just tilt it a little bit. But it could display with your happy feet showing, or they might choose to keep this tucked in and display it this way. So either way, really interesting card, and like I said, folds absolutely flat. The other thing, which we haven't talked about, is weight. If I were to just keep stacking and adding foam squares and whatnot, that impacts the weight. This is probably, I'll go away, I'll be back with that, but I think this is just a standard postage stamp. So this is going to be less than uh, an ounce with an envelope. So let me go make the envelope, I'm going to weigh it, and I'll be back with that. I'm ready to work on the next piece. And so here we go. This is the top of it, and I'm using nested stars to create this. So once again it's going to be cut, fill, cut, fill, cut, fill, cut, fill in here. But notice I've cut into my panel. And why I put paper on top of cardstock is because I want these weights or these profiles to be somewhat similar so that it's really flat. They don't have to be exact, but if I were to use paper only, uh, these things would actually stand up over it. I've made my card blank because like I said, I, when you make your own blanks it's great because you can figure this out first and then figure out what size card needs to lie on top of it. So I'm going to have this here. I did keep the innies. And I'm just going to leave a, a photo uh, screen show. So as I cut each piece, we're going to do photos. We're going to look at the finished project when we get back and then look at the next project.
So I finished this card, kind of the same style, which is which is pretty much a freeform style. So I've got very independent cutting dies, uh, creating my card front. And I was also thinking that this would be a really nice style card, the whole inlay, because it keeps the card interesting uh, without a lot of frou-frou. So this would be a really good kind of masculine card. And on the inside, I just added a couple more stars, went in paper, and stamped it a bit. So really nice. I promised I was going to weigh, so I did. And actually, this came in 0.9 ounces, so standard stamp. And actually, this one came in 0.9 ounces. And the card I didn't show you actually came in 0.8 ounces. So these are all standard uh, stamps, which is really good, because I think out of all these cards, if I spent 25 cents in consumables, uh, I was lucky. So, spending twice as much to send it is, was, is a lot uh, better than spending four times. At least here in the States. I'm not sure what goes on uh, in other countries. So I've got this, this. I'm going to leave photos of these and then I'm going to set up for the next piece. Okay, so for this project, I'm going to be replicating this guy. And so um, all I want to call attention to on the panel is that your panels don't always need to be one piece. So I've got two different pieces of patterned paper. This is a copy paper with clouds, and then this is a brick from uh, one of my Tether Lace magazines. So ignore him for a second, because the way I'm starting out is first with my cut and fill. So cut out my balloon using a balloon framelit filled in this pink balloon, then cut out the bow on top and filled that in. Now I've got little niblets in here, so you want to be careful of not throwing away any of the, your cutout pieces. And then I went ahead and taped it. And all this is, is I tested my ink. I use water-based inks, and sometimes when you stamp on colored paper, it's not quite the color you wanted. But that turned out fine, so use the back for testing. Okay, what we're going to do now is maybe more a traditional what you're thinking about with inlay. So I've got one cutting die, and this is this comes from Tattered Lace. It comes from the January issue 37 of the magazine. So it's this teddy bear. And what I'm going to do is this the way he cuts out, assuming that he had his ears, or she, this is a she in this case, had her ears and nose in there. She cuts out as one piece. And so what we're going to do is clip this apart. Tattered Lace calls it snippability, but if you've been crafting for a while, you've probably done this. And then you're going to sub in different pieces. So we're going to give her a purple uh, clothes to wear. And I've got my black ears and nose. That's going to fill in these pieces. And I've got the banner, or the poster that she's holding. And see that I've already stamped everything. So, before I put this together, because now it's one piece and I'm going to fill in, kind of like filling in a puzzle, I can go ahead and pull this out. So he comes out as one piece. And I'm going to attach this to my card base. So I'm going to be using a purple card base again. And I'm going to snip out the pieces I want. We're going to take another look at it and then we'll start filling in the puzzle. So I've got my puzzle ready to get filled in. and. I snipped out all the different colored pieces, and I like to put them back together up here just to make sure I don't have anything missing, I won't need anything else. And I like to start with the larger pieces, so in this case it would be the head, and I just want to stay inside the base of my puzzle. I keep calling it a puzzle, but it's the outline of my um, die cut. So I'm going to start with the head. That's the most important. Again, I'm not worried about glue showing up through the ears because those are going to get plugged in as well. And I want to get that tucked in there. I want to be careful not to pick up too much glue, though. I'll probably go with the next bigger piece, which will be my poster. Actually, I might as well go ahead and glue the whole thing. So that needs to fit 
than that. And it's going to be pretty close. Might not be exact, exact. Kind of manipulate a little bit. Uh, let's go to her foot. Or I guess her paw. <laughs> Is it better? And I am going to want a little bit more glue on that little thread that's hanging out. So plug that in. Okay, lastly I've got a nose and ears. And I left one ear in so I wouldn't have to figure out which ear piece goes with which. But the nose is pretty easy. You just want to make sure you're working on the back. When you add your glue, you make sure you got it turned the right way. So I'll put that in there. Got to glue to the back. And I know this is my right side here, so I'll save myself a step there. If I need to come back with an adhesive eraser after this dries, I will. And now I know I've got the last one. Actually, I think it's easier to. Go ahead and put glue on it before I pluck it out of there. Well, that's ready to go in. And there she is. Too cute. So I've got a couple more embellishments, then we'll be back to look at that on the inside. Okay, so she's finished off, and I've got a new toy, at least new in my inventory, and those are Nuvo Drops. So I'm still practicing with those, but so far I think I love them. The problem is you have to wait. So her nose is going to clear up, but she's going to have a clear nose with a little bit of a profile, and then I just added some different colors into the balloon. And on the inside, this card has an insert, and I'm just going to be real careful not to touch that, and more stamping, so really cool. And this guy, or actually both of these cards, came in at about 0.6 ounces if you're keeping track, so smaller cards, kind of a little bit less going on, and that's the way they're going to roll. Now, where I'm going next, actually what I'm going to leave you with is a short segment because this is really uh, persnickety paper piecing and there, are little, there is a little tip and trick I want to show you so that takes about a minute and a half and uh, of course I'll leave you photos of that finished project but there's a whole other genre of inlay and that would be silhouettes and uh, I want to give it due time so that'll be like a second video and it'll be called uh, probably creative piecing inlay silhouettes and scenes so doing more creative, probably a little more persnickety, but really pretty, really pretty results. So anyway, I hope you give this technique a try. Um, like I said, it's a little bit different than stacking. And if you're concerned about postage, a little more economical. But um, like I said, masculine, probably more masculine for your guy cards. And uh, just a lot of fun. So thank you for watching. Hey, this is going to be about the most persnickety inlay project that I'll ever do. And this is a Love and Five Hearts cutting die from Paper Wishes. And you can see all these little niblets. So, a couple things. I went ahead and used the cutting die to cut out the outside heart. You get left with a piece like this. And of course, here we go. All these little pieces. So, first thing. When I put this onto my cardstock, because this is the mat, this just happens to be two colors, I want to put down some sort of double-sided adhesive, or at least some adhesive that's not going to dry with air. Because the first thing I'll do is get that onto my base card, put this on top. Actually, let's go ahead and move to this one, because I've already done that. Use my outline, which is gray here. And now, I've cut these. The cut's really good. I really don't. I want to pluck them out one at a time. So I'm going to use uh, tweezers and I'm going to start with the larger pieces. And as I need them, I'm going to punch them out and place them. And yeah, I've done, actually, I've done this heart before. I've never split it like this, so that's going to be an additional challenge. But it just looks so good. So that's going to take me a bit, and uh, you've seen the finished card, so you know what it looks like. Anyway, just a couple tips and tricks on that.